Israeli News Live, March the 6th, 2017. And of course, this whole scandal over whether or not Obama has tapped President Trump during the campaign trail just before uh, the final day of election there is really beginning to gain more steam. And uh, we know that uh, President Trump has uh, requested uh, an investigation on the activities of President, uh, former President Barack Hussein Obama and what he did leading up uh, to the campaign itself. And now not only has uh, President Trump uh, accused Obama of wiretapping, but even Prime Minister Netanyahu has thrown his own hat into the ring. Where is it going to end up at? Many are starting to call this like the scandal of Watergate with Richard Nixon just before the election there. Is it going to be Obamagate? Who knows? And uh, let's take a look at some of the facts that are coming out or at least the accusations that are being uh, levied against uh, President, uh, former President Obama about these particular events here. Uh, this came out yesterday, the conser conservative Daily Post timeline and events involved in the strategic attack on the Trump administration. Uh, and in their uh, writing here, says, drawing on sources including the New York Times and the Washington Post, Mark Levin described the case against Obama as far but failed to mention events important to the overall timeline. And this is something the conservative Daily Post has done. On June of uh, 2016, the Obama administration files a request with a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court FISA to monitor communications involving Donald Trump and several advisors. The request uncharacteristically is denied. July, Russia joke, WikiLeaks releases emails from the Democratic National Committee that show an effort to prevent Senator Bernie Sanders from winning the presidential nomination. In a press conference, Donald Trump refers to Hillary Clinton own missing emails, joking, Russia, if you are listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. The remark becomes the basis for accusations by Clinton and the media that Trump invited further hacking. Well, I guess in a way that is inviting further hacking. You don't just stand there as a uh, pre 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 presidential nominee and make such accusations and not be considered hacking. Uh, nonetheless, October Podesta's emails, uh, uh, WikiLeaks releases the emails of Clinton campaign chair John Podesta rolling out batches every day until the election, creating new mini scandals. The Clinton campaign blames Trump and the Russians. On, and also in October, we have the Obama administration submits a new narrow request to the uh, FISA court now focused on a computer server in the Trump Tower suspected of links to Russian banks. No evidence is found, but the wiretaps uh, continue, ostensibly for national security reasons. Andrew McCarthy, a national review, later notes the Obama administration is now monitoring and opposing presidential campaign using the high-tech surveillance powers of the Federal Intelligence Services. So under these particular guidelines, yes indeed, there was a tap of uh, Donald Trump at his tower there to find out information. And no doubt they found out information that had nothing to do with Russia without question. In January of 2017, BuzzFeed, CNN, Dozier, BuzzFeed releases CNN reports and supposed intelligence Dozier compiled by a foreign former spy at purports uh, to show contentious, contentious contact between Russia and the Trump campaign and says the Russians have compromising information about Trump. None of the allegations can be verified and some are proven false. Several media outlets claim that they had been aware of the Dozier for months and that it had been circulating in Washington. Also in January, uh, NSA sharing as uh, Michelle Walsh later notes and the New York Times reports the outgoing Obama administration expands the power of national security agency to sharing global intercept personnel communications with the governments. 16 other intelligence agencies before allowing privacy protection. The new powers and reduced protections could make it easier for the intelligence on private citizens to be circulated improperly or leaked. And of course, the list goes on. You can read it. We'll read this uh, here. We will be posting this here in the description below. Uh, it is important to know us also uh, March, the Washington Post targets Jeff Sessions. 
uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions in contact twice with the Russian ambassador during the campaign. I did follow up on that as well. Very interesting things happened during the time of Jeff Sessions uh, of his meeting with the Russian uh, diplomat. And by the way, uh, Jeff Sessions did state that he was doing it under the capacity that he was as a, uh, as a senator and also as part of the Armed Service Committee. Uh, so he did have a right to be meeting them, but it is interesting to note, though, that it was also the same day that President uh, or presidential nominee at the time, Trump, Donald Trump, was actually stating it, wouldn't it be nice if we worked with the Russians to defeat ISIS? So it is a bit suspicious, as some would say, that uh, the president made these types of statements at the same time of that of Jeff Sessions and what he was uh, no, or meeting with uh, the ambassador at that time. Also, uh, presidential nominee at the time, Donald Trump, was also speaking about uh, lifting the sanctions. Uh, and there again, I have maintained myself here at Israeli News Live that it should not be an issue, period, that any of uh, President Trump as a nominee uh, would have had contacts with Russian ambassadors for the sake of the fact that he may be the very president, which he became the president, and they would need to build upon some type of trusting relationship to say, okay, look, we see the Obama administration has been headed, uh, headed towards a war with Russia. We would like to avert a war, and they're actually beginning to talk about these things. I think it was constructive and not destructive as the mainstream media has been portraying it. So to me, it's just ludicrous that mainstream media has really gone after Jeff Sessions and others and accusing them of having contacts with the Russians, when in fact, I think it is a very intelligent thing to do. Uh, also, Breitbart is reporting, non-denial, denial, Obama response to the Trump wiretap claim raises more questions. A number of ex-Obama officials appear to suggest that the Obama administration may have actually wiretapped the Trump campaign, but, but if they did it, would have been justified by a court and part of an investigation by the Justice Department, not led by order from the White House or former president himself. And again, that kind of leans a little bit of credence there to the article that we just gave you here, over here on Conservative Daily Post. So it says on Saturday, uh, former President Obama, uh, Obama spokesman Kevin Lewis denied that the former White House or former president uh, himself would have given such an order to wiretap Trump Tower or any other type of surveillance in any case, but that such an order would have come from the independent investigation led by the Department of Justice. Then we have here, uh, Kumi asked Justice Department to reject uh, that's the FBI's director, uh, James Comey, asked the Justice Department to reject Trump's wiretapping claim. Now, why would he even reject it? If there is a suspicion that something like this may have happened, why reject the claim? Why not investigate it? But anyway, the FBI director, James uh, B. Comey, asked the Justice Department this week to publicly reject President Trump's assertion that President Barack Obama ordered the tapping of Mr. Trump's phones. Senior American officials said on Sunday, Mr. Comey has argued that the highly charged claim is false and must be corrected, they said, but the department has not released any such statement. Mr. Comey made the request on Saturday after Mr. Trump leveled his allegation on Twitter, has been working to get the Justice Department to knock down the claim because it, it falsely insinuates the FBI broke the law, the officials said. Well, no wonder why the uh, James Comey would want this to be struck down because uh, him being the director of the FBI and this would be FBI breaking the law would put him right in the number one seat as a target. So yes, of course he's going to uh, reject this. Maybe it should be a congressional hearing instead, not just the FBI, but a congressional hearing. Mark Levin, and the evidence is overwhelming that Obama administration spied on Trump. On Sunday's edition of Fox and Friends, radio host Mark Levin discussed the evidence backing up President Trump's claim that someone from the Obama administration was spying on him before the inauguration. Uh, that was kind of obvious. Seemed like they were doing the same thing to Hillary Clinton with all the WikiLeaks going on. And of course, even though the Clinton campaign was blaming Russia, it was clearly by uh, Julian Assange claimed that it was not so much Russia that was doing it, but someone inside the U.S. government that was doing it. So there was a lot of spying and leaking going on all the way around the board. Uh, also, we have to watch Obama's wiretapped Netanyahu just like Trump. Fox News reported that Obama administration allowed wiretapping of Donald Trump just as it allowed the National Security Agency to record Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu by not telling the NSA to do it and also saying, don't do it. 
according to senior officials in the Obama White House here. Let's listen in to see what they were saying on Fox and Friends there about this very issue. and said, President Obama did not order it. That statement did not say <laughs> it it did not happen. Right. Someone else ordered it, apparently. And it reminded me of the story from 2015. In the Wall Street Journal, exploded out there. A lot of people have forgotten about it. December 29th, 2015, about Israel being spied on and members of Congress, spied on, by the way, by the Obama administration, members of Congress getting dragged into the net. They said, quote, behind the scenes, the White House decided to keep certain allies under close watch. Topping the list, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. White House officials believed intercepted, intercepted information could be valuable to counter Mr. Mr. Netanyahu's campaign. And this was on Iran, of course. They also recognized that asking for it was politically risky. So wary of a paper trail stemming from a request, the White House let the NSA decide what to share and what to withhold. Quote, we didn't say do it, a senior U.S. official said. We didn't say don't do it. <laughs> Which is exactly what happened today. Now, sounds like the exact same thing. here's what's fascinating about what you're hearing on Fox and Friends here, quoting about that of Prime Minister Netanyahu, was that the the Netanyahu, excuse me, the Obama administration allowing the intercepts of Prime Minister Netanyahu's. Uh, in whatever, however, their information, this, this information here that he is saying because of Iran and that this was dealing with the campaign. Why? The Obama administration wanted to prevent Netanyahu from being reelected. They also sent a delegation there to try to do exactly that. Now, they blame the Russians for interfering with the U.S. election, but the one that was just as guilty and blatantly and openly and publicly guilty was the Obama administration when they came against Prime Minister Netanyahu. And to me, that is nothing but hypocrisy. And so you want to blame Russia for getting involved with the election, which maybe Russia did have something to do with the election. Uh, maybe they did try to sway an opinion. Well, one thing I'm sure they did was through RT. RT, no doubt, was siding more with that of President Trump as the running uh, uh, the candidate over that of Hillary Clinton. Although they they were unbiased and they showed both sides and both issues on both sides, but clearly Russia used their own media to give more credence to that of President Trump, thinking that they would give them more favor of working together. That's a little bit more reasonable. But when it comes to Obama administration, they ride out, went on the attack to try to stop Netanyahu from being prime minister and even spying on him and public publicly bringing the information out. Now, who's to blame then? And who's to say anything about Russia in light of their own dirty laundry? I think it's quite a bit of a shame to say the very least there. Kind of closing here, another breaking story. You'll need to check out uh, Yana's channel, my wife, Yana Benoon, on Rise Up Children of God. I'll put right here at the top of the links here for you to be able to check out. Look in the description below here and check out her channel. She's done an in-depth uh, uh, review on this article that broke this, uh, just a couple of days ago on Yahoo News. Experts find mass grave at ex-Catholic orphanage in Ireland. This is not good at all. Uh, it shows the 800 children who perished and who were buried and hidden away to where the world would never know about it. At least they thought they wouldn't know about it. Kind of reminds me of when Cain kills Abel and yet he hides his brother hoping that no one knows about the murder of his brother. But sure enough, his blood cried out from the earth and God heard the cry of that little boy. What about 800 children? I'm sure God's heard the cry of them and now it's coming to light. Check out Yana Benoon over on Rise Up Children of God for the rest of this story. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching and don't forget if it's a blessing to you, we always need your support. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org and thank you for watching. Shalom.